Pokemon trainers. Welcome to episode 96 of Gotta Watch Them All, the podcast bringing together trainers from every corner of Pokemon fandom before watching along with an episode of Pokemon the series, starting all the way back at episode 1, but today we're going to be watching episode 96, where for art thou Pokemon, gotta watch that, them all as part of the mouthful. Pokemon Professor, <laughs> it is, <laughs> gotta watch them all as part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Sunday, May 31st, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Ken Pescatore, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Adam, hi. Hey, how's it going? What's up, man? How are you? Doing all right. Doing all right. Um, I, f- I feel like it was just yesterday we spoke. <laughs> it was just yesterday that we did speak. What's going on? How are you? Um, It was windy and cold versus being like up in the upper 80s. Oh man, it so was, it's like it was you know it's pulling an old New England. No, it was it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful out today here in Jersey. Uh, I spent most of the day outside, so it was uh, definitely a nice, nice springish day. But uh, yeah, it, it was definitely like yeah. sweatshirt weather weather a little bit. I mean, I had a windbreaker on, so I mean, it was like at points it was a little hot, but no, definitely man, needed I a was, jacket. I was in a t shirt and sweating today so it was uh it was definitely hot but all right on today's show the next pokemon tcg expansion has been announced darkness what? ablaze it's gonna be uh it's gonna be the next ep- next expansion to hit shelves i know we've been we've been hyping Charizard up and is in this so one. much i know i know it's gonna be awesome so there's but two like, hyper rare charizards to chase oh my lanta well it, we'll get into it but it's like how are they gonna follow up to Rebel Clash, with Rebel Clash being so awesome. So it's going to be, this set's going to be interesting. We're going to have to see. I mean, I was taking a peek at the Japanese set, and there, there's some cards in here. So we'll, we'll definitely talk about that in just a moment. Uh, continuing on the TCG, Blacephalon Ultra Beast is still making waves in the TCG. Adam's going to break down how this card can uh, make some big plays and do some serious damage without having to uh, worry about giving up multiple prizes when he gets knocked out because it's just a regular basic UB. Uh, we're going to put a few trainers in the spotlight and share some really cool quotes that might spark your interest thanks to a very cool article series on Pokemon.com where every month they take a look at a different trainer. So we'll run through that a little bit, see if anyone is interesting to you. And then Pokemon Go Fest 2020 has been announced. We don't have any details yet. But we have the dates, so we'll talk about that, speculate a little bit, and uh, just get hyped because, you know, this is going to be a very different year. It has been a very different year for Pokemon Go, so we'll try to make sense and what this possibly could be for players at home to experience Pokemon Go Fest. And then finally, we'll do our anime watch-along with episode 96, Wherefore Art Thou Pokemon? All right, Adam, let's start with Darkness Ablaze, so... Like I said it just a second ago, we've been hyping up Rebel Clash so much. Even before it came out, we were talking about it a ton. It came out, we're still talking about it. We were like, no set will ever be better than this set. Really, it's it's been awesome. You know, there's so many powerful cards, so many cards that were iterations of past cards that are now like getting this, you know, renaissance. And so many cards that just slide into everybody's deck in multiple copies. Now we have the next set, Darkness Ablaze. The mascot, I guess you can call it, of this set is Eternatus. So this is going to be the the debut of Eternatus in TCG form. We have time, so it's early. So I don't want to talk too much details yet, but this set is going to be coming out August 14th. Now, right around that window is the rotation, right? Isn't it something around August? Yep. So... You know, the, the, I guess they kind of time that accordingly, you know, and then will be three expansions into the Sword and Shield block at that point, and then we're going to be team up forward for standard. But Eternatus is making its debut as a V-card, uh, along with other Vs like Senescorch, Mew, Galarian Slowbro, uh, and a bunch of others. We're also going to have new VMAX Pokemon, just like you were saying earlier, Charizard. Having a VMAX card will be very exciting. I know that'll be an awesome chase. Uh, also, Grimmsnarl, Butterfree. I think there's seven seven total VMAX in this set. Yes. So the VMAX cards are always really ex- exciting. Uh, the set's going to have over 185 cards, so still a big set, but not as big as we've seen with the, you know... Yeah, I appreciate plus. the lower number. 
for sure. It's it's still not that low though. It's still it's better than cards. over two hundred. Yeah, and then, but then it'll be like all right, and uh, twenty you know secret rares. So then it'll push it up over, but we'll have to see. But it's going to feature a bunch of Pokemon that were originally found in Galar. So you know, I'm not sure what Pokemon between the Sword and Shield base set and the Sword and Shield Rebel Clash we haven't seen yet, but. Those are going to start to filter in, and we'll fill out our Galar decks in TCG form. Uh, 14 V cards, 7 V Max cards, 15 trainers, and 3 new special energy cards. So that's always interesting to see how this is going to work and, and what these cards are going to be with the special energies, because that could shape the way and make cards that you might not think are playable, playable. If you, you know, can pull, like, you know, some magic out of your hat because you have some special energy. So we'll have to look into that as we get more information on the cards going forward. Now, like I said, we still have a couple months before the set releases. I don't want to go into too much detail, but Adam, what do you think they're going to have to do to follow up on Rebel Clash? I mean, do they go for crazy artwork? Do they go for pushing the mechanics again, powerful cards? I mean, how do you follow Um, up? I think the powerful cards comes into this one because Charizard's in the set and they don't usually you know take that lightly so we're gonna get a charizard v and a charizard v max and i know that that's on everyone's hype level is it is it eternus or eternatus i don't know how to say it but eternatus i I always in my in my head i'm like eternatus i don't know no i i would say like eternity so eternatus you know that's how i that's how i kind of make sense of it that makes sense but um, so I know that that's like, an like uh, going to be insane. Um, well, my son the loves the way that card looks, or loves the way that Pokemon looks. So I, I think that kids are going to go just like they would go crazy over Charizard. They're going to go crazy over the Eternatus card because it just it's just an awesome looking Pokemon. Just looks so mean, so tough. So uh, I think both of those, from a collection standpoint, will probably be. Uh, have this immediate demand for them just because people want to get their hands on it. But yeah, I I guess powerful cards, the, the energy creep is just still going and you know, we're, we're going to have to pay closer attention to this, but we have time. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. I mean, we still have all of June, all of July and half of August. So plenty of time before the set comes out, you know, we'll, we'll touch on it. I'm sure, you know, Pokemon.com in the next couple weeks will drop like little, little promo yeah they'll show us some v cards or something yeah exactly you know they'll show us the pre-releases yeah something like that so uh, we'll be sure to cover it here on the show but yeah it's going to be interesting to follow it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to follow up to rebel clash with just how popular and awesome rebel clash has been all right but now let's go back in time a little bit adam we're going to look back a couple sets to blacephalon and I know that when we were first talking about putting this show together and we were talking about Blacephalon, you're like, oh, I know this car well, card well. It's beaten me many times. So yes. <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about Blacephalon and its awesome Fireball Circus move? Okay, so this is all coming from Pokemon.com. Like Ken said, Blacephalon, it has Fireball Circus, but let's get into the little details real quick. It has 120 hit points, one fire energy for Blazer. It does 10 damage. Turn one of your face down prize cards face up. If it's a fire energy, this attack does 50 more damage. So it's a good way early game to see what's prized. Sure. Especially if, you know, you're looking through your deck, you know, for search and you're like, okay, I'm missing something. You can try to narrow it down. But what where this card really shines is A, it's an Ultra Beast, and B, it has the Fireball Circus. It does 50 damage times the number of fire energies that you discard from your hand insane right yeah it's pretty solid and and that number adds up so quickly you have so many cards to get you there and it's not a stretch by any means because there's so much fire support because you can use welder attach two fires draw three cards attach an energy um the deck plays jirachis Uh, in this article it's talking about like how to get how to get maximize your turns and the sequencing which is something that, you know, Pokemon doesn't really ever talk about, but it's there. Like all the, you know, top players, they they understand this inside and out. You know, that's why when they use their first search card, they use their quick ball. Every single card is analyzed. 
they're like, oh, I'm missing my 13th energy. I'm missing one of my Jirachis. I'm missing this. Like, those are pro plays, and it's it's nice to see Pokemon bringing this to light. Talk about, like, the, the advanced strategies, yeah. Exactly. And there's just so many cards in the deck that are items that help this deck just roll through anything in its way. You've got Fiery Flint. You have to discard two cards from your hand, search your deck for up to fi- four fire energy cards, reveal them, put them into your hand. So right there, you're doing 200 damage just with yeah, one card. Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. And then you play stuff like uh, Fire Crystal, Energy Retrieval. Fire Crystal is going to put three fire energies from your discard pile back into your hand. So again, there's 150. That's nice, yeah. Easy peasy. I like the fact of playing Welder with this. So, like, let's say you have one energy in your hand. You could play your energy down on Blacephalon, play Welder, get two more energies, place them on. So you can power up Fireball Circus in one turn. One turn. Then, it, then if you have something like, you know, like you're saying, to, to get those energies back into your hand or from your discard, then you're, you know, if, if you had an extra fire energy in your hand and you're pulling two more energy out of your discard or something like that, yeah, you're doing 150, 200 damage in in a single turn. So nominal prep, and you know this is a nice like turn two, turn three where you don't have to worry about your first turn Pokemon not being able to attack. You can bring this in in turn two and then lay down the damage and then you know pull it back out or whatever. But I just love the fact that you can power this thing up in one turn. And lay out, lay down all that damage. I think that's that's a really cool, and it makes for a really exciting gameplay to watch. That's what right. I right. Mean. And there's as so a, many as a you know as a, as a viewer, it's very exciting to see that. And so you know, you knock out one of theirs. You know, they're Blacephalon because it's the main attacker. You know, you knock one out. They're running Jirachis as well. So Jirachis, Stellar Wish. We've talked about it m- multiple times. You know, you look at your top five, take a trainer card. Doesn't matter if it's a supporter, or an item, but nine times out of ten, you're gonna get an item. And you're going to get one of these cards to help you, per, like, per, you know, proceed in the game. So you've got stuff like Beast Ring, too. So if, you're, if your opponent has three or four prize cards, you search for two basic energies, attach them to your Ultra Beast, boom. It's just like a welder, only they come, you know, straight from the deck instead of your hand. So if you do have exactly. those energies in your hand, it's, you know, you're just stacking up the damage. And then you play, um, like, one Ultra Space, you know, that'll go get you a free search. Um, but really the card you want is heat factory prism star discard um a card from your hand draw th- draw through or discard a fire and draw three cards right so right welder heat factory there's just it just this this deck is insane and it just keeps going um and then to top it off a strategy that's come to light as of recent um it actually just won the limitless qualifier um first place this, st- this, yeah. this strategy was in there. Um, it uses Mr. Mime from the Detective Pikachu set with Pantomime and Orangaroo from Sword and Shield to swap a card from your hand to the top of the deck and Jirachi Prism Star. So uh, Mr. Mime uh, says, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench once, for, like during your turn, you may switch one of your face down prize cards with the top card of your deck. Like, okay, whatever. Doesn't right. seem doesn't seem that crazy. You know, an Orangaroo switches the top card of your deck with your card in your hand. Jirachi Prism Star has the ability Wish Upon a Star. If you took this Pokemon as a face down prize card during your turn and your bench isn't full, before you put it into your hand, you may put it onto your bench and take one more prize card. Just it's so crazy. Imagine knocking like, out a V Max. So you discard, you know, whatever your your six energies. You discard it's like a four you, prize swing. You yeah, you just took four prizes off of that. Yeah, that's Insane. that's wild. I mean, and big this big place, and and I also like the fact that it's just a basic Ultra Beast. So if you get knocked out, it's not like. A GX where you're losing two prizes, or a tag team where you're losing three prizes, like you get knocked out because it only does have 120 hit points. So if you get knocked out, it's just one prize. So it's not gonna, you know, it's not the end of the world. You can dip in, do 150 or 200 damage, and then 
take the knockout and only have to give up one prize. I just I just think that's really cool uh, and very effective and efficient, and it's just a good way to have a little bit of a defensive play in your pocket where you can do all this offense and then not really have to sacrifice too much when the thing does get knocked out because you know most of these these V and and tag team cards are going to have absolutely no problem dealing out 120. So you just got to be ready to get knocked out. Here's the kicker. What came out of Rebel Clash was Scoop Up Net. So it says, put one of your Pokemon that is not a Pokemon V or a Pokemon GX into your hand. So you get that Jirachi. You just took an extra prize. I'm going to put it back in my hand. I'm going to put the Mr. Mime back in my hand. I'm going to use a Rangaroo, swap that again, and then I only have to take <laughs> a one prize knockout to take two prizes and I win the game. Wow. Wow. And like I said about sequencing... It it goes into detail about, you know, like you have a Jirachi with a skateboard, so it gives it free retreat. And like, which one do you promote? The one with the skateboard or the one without? You bring up the one without because you can scoop up net, bring it back to your hand after using Stellar Wish, use the next Stellar Wish and able to retreat into a third Stellar Wish just to be able to maximize the amount of cards in your hand. Yeah, it's insane. And it's like, it's like, it just says all this stuff. And it's like, that's the kind of stuff that I've been like missing. That's what we yeah. need. And it's oh, awesome that duty. Pokemon proper is writing this like articles like this. I mean, very cool. It's very, it's not very exactly, cool. po- you know, it's, it's Steven Ivanov or Stefan Ivanov, but it's just it's still on Pokemon.com. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It basically Love just, it. you know, the whole article just is, you know, it's talking about Pikachu, Zekrom, RCSD, Algapalkia and Zashi and V and Dragapult, uh, V Max, just, being major contenders right now in the biggest decks and that this card can still destroy them very easily. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. I will. If I were you, everyone, I would listen to special conditions because I'm sure <laughs> the strategies like this are ahead on Adam's TCG podcast. If you want to hear more of his awesome expert analysis, because <laughs> it always blows me away to hear him go off on his rants because uh, it's just so exciting to, to see, like like you said, the sequencing, just to see, all right, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and here's your results. Like, whoa. Like, it's just such a cool order of operations. And, you know, when it all comes together like that, it's uh, it's pretty awesome to see. So very, very cool. Yeah, one of the examples, just r- before we jump to the next thing, <laughs> it's like um, you use uh, the Fiery Flint to get the four energies out of your deck. So increasing your chances at hitting a trainer with a stellar wish so it's like you use that before stellar wish just to get like increase your odds right yeah it's, but yeah let's wild. move on <laughs> i could talk about tcg all day so <laughs> all right well let's talk about characters let's talk about trainers let's talk about something that's going to kind of be multifaceted where you're going to have trainers that are going to have appearances in the video games in the TCG, in the manga, you know, just in the franchise itself. And and what Pokemon.com does is they do like a trainer spotlight every month. This month they looked at Cynthia, which is really cool. And what they do is they'll create a, a whole landing page for the trainer that's going to show, you know, back history, lore, it's Pokemon and all this stuff. But on the main landing page, they have a cool quote. And for Cynthia, uh, who is the Sinner region champion, um, she's known for using Garchomp. Uh, there's a really cool quote from her from her and says, quote, we share our lives with our Pokemon and our happiness grows as we all become greater than we were alone. End quote. I love that. It's just showing like the importance of Pokemon and how, you know, our lives are better because of Pokemon. And I just thought that was really cool. So check out Cynthia's profile, click into it so you can actually get some more details and it shows you like where her appearances were. And Adam, you love talking TCG. I know the Cynthia card is one that's just been been very popular since it made its return, right? Yes, yeah. Shuffle your hand, draw six cards. Nothing yeah, really solid. nothing really beats it, but then, you know, decks that can afford discarding cards, um, they love uh, Professor Professor's research. Discard your hand, draw seven. That's been around yeah. since uh, like, professor oak right something like that yeah <laughs> discard your hand draw seven so it's a classic nice nice all right and uh going back a couple months here on this page just to talk about a couple other trainers they show lysander i'm always just a lysander fan just because i i dig his kind of anti-hero style because 
he's uh, the Team Flare boss. He's from Kalos. He's known for using his Pyroar. And he's got, like, this very ominous quote that just says, My desire, it is for a a more beautiful world. And if you know anything about Lysander, yeah, he may want that. But he's willing to do some pretty messed up stuff in order to achieve that. So he's a real anti-hero. And I just love the fact that he's willing to, you know, you you don't necessarily see that dark side in a lot of Pokemon stuff. So it's just very cool to, to have a character like that. And he just looks really neat. He looks really awesome. It's got to uh, be why his uh, Lysander's trump card was banned. Yeah, no, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. Well, and then we have, and, and Ly- the mechanic behind Lysander's old card as a supporter is now back with boss's orders and from rebel clash. So, I mean, it's like, Again, you know, just that that switch mechanic of none of your opponent's Pokemon in the TCG on their bench are safe because you could just play the supporter and switch them out. Uh, One more. We'll look at Steven Stone, the Hoenn region champion, and his partner Metagross. Its quote is, It's well known how often my intuition turns out to be right. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a little cocky. <laughs> That's kind of his style a little. as well. Um, but uh, <laughs> he's got some was nice tongues and rings. Yes, yes, he was the champion of Ruby and Sapphire, and he's definitely had appearances across the franchise, across the Pokemon universe, in the animated sp- series. In there was an animated special, uh, the Mega Evolution special he was in. So it's like he's he's been his known poses in, in Pokemon Go. Yes, yes, the pose is the level 10, reaching rank 10 in PvP. Your avatar can can get Steven's pose that, you know, almost looks like the boss's orders card where he's just kind of like pointing out like, you know, being pompous. It's just really, really cool, really funny. But check out the link in the description so you can take a look back at all the fe- the featured trainers that Pokemon.com has put together. Let us know who your favorite is. Is there, I mean, even like Team Ro- the Team Rocket trios in the list, so... There's there's definitely some fan favorites in here. Let us know who you like. I love seeing all the artwork um, and being able to see like the partner Pokemon and all that cool stuff and getting the appearances like, hey, it was in this video game or it was in Pokemon Masters or this is in Pokemon Adventures. Like I've never really read the manga. So it's like those story arcs I'm not too familiar with. So it was cool learning what was going on in, in, in the manga in relation to some of these trainers. So check out the link. Let us know who's your favorite. All right, let's shift gears over to Pokemon Go. Adam, we talked about this at great length on Lured Up, our Pokemon Go show. This is all coming from PokemonGoLive.com. Niantic is promising a completely reimagined version of Pokemon Go Fest for the 2020. I don't know how I feel. I'm like excited, but nervous because we have a tiny bit of info, which is just the dates, but we know it's also going to be a play from home event. And it's going to be spread across two days, Saturday, July 25th and Sunday, July 26th. And trainers that purchase a ticket will have access to play on both of the days. But how, like what, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to see, like, what are we going to see that's going to break the game? This is the thing. They, they, They have to do something different than the Safari Zones because we've had Safari Zones from home multiple times, three of them now. We've had spotlight hours. We've had raid remote raid hours. We've had, um, you know, all these things, incense days, like all this stuff that was designed to play from home with over-the-top spawns, whether it was focus spawns on specific Pokemon or something like a Safari Zone or something like a timed regional challenge where you have this, you know, an increased spawn pool. It, they're going to have to do something above and beyond the spawns and they're going to have to do something above and beyond raids because we have remote raiding now. So I don't I was, know I'm what just that could be. They might do like all day raid. You know what I mean? Like, so it, as soon as an egg hatches, you know, like it's got like it's, you know, like it's just 24 hours. Like the egg is just constantly running. at every Yes. Gym. Yeah. So, you know, just a new Pokemon every, you know. That's imagine they imagine they did a bunch of gyms like every gym is a raid and they give you like a window of like a couple hours where it's unlimited raid passes. You just like get as many raids in as you possibly can. That would be awesome. Well, well like, they could do so like fun a raid hour within the weekend. So for both days, you've got one hour where it's free raid passes. 
Yeah, just everyone goes nuts reading. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. No, I, I, I think the remote raid invite system will be released for GoFest. I, believe me, I want it sooner. I just don't know if that's going to happen. But I'd imagine something like that that's going to make the community experience stronger is going to need to come because what GoFest, the core of GoFest, what it's all about is community, getting together, and really the trades. We know that remote rate, remote trading is not coming. Niantic has just, it's just something I don't think they're ever going to give us. So if you take away the remote trading tinfoil hat, I don't know what else there could be besides some kind of raid experience. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, but make sure you save the dates, July 25th, 26th, Saturday, Sunday. Let us know what you would like to see and let us know what you think you're going to see. Because and let us know what you'll be like. Will you be playing in it? And yeah, like you said, like Ken said, what, like, what do you want to see? Cause I mean, ob- obviously I'd like to see shaman. I'd like to see yeah. two, two different quests. One on Saturday for Shaman regular, and then one on Sunday for Shaman Skyform. Oh, that's that's what I want. And uh, what do you think this is going to be? A twenty dollar ticket? Yeah, I, I mean, probably right. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. if if Regigigas was eight bucks, you know what I mean, and you could you could finish that in you know three hours, two hours. It's like two day event with lots of yeah, ten lots bucks more each. Stuff going on. That that would that would make sense. Probably yeah. twenty bucks. I so def- maybe yeah. they'll do like a a twenty dollar entry level ticket, and then maybe like a thirty dollar premium ticket or something like that. I don't know. Early we'll access. Have to see. Yeah, early access. But uh, I'm excited. It's still a Go Fest, so we'll have to see. It's st- how we're, we're still out. a Go for for Go Fest, and in the yes, in yes. like the, I- the image they use, they have you know obviously Pikachu's like hey, uh, but there's like a Jigglypuff in there. There's an Oddish, and then a Cherum. So we might see Cherum shiny which would be shiny exciting yeah yeah i i think it that with that image it's still too early for them to start releasing pokemon so that's why it seemed like a very conservative image nothing too crazy no regionals or anything like that but and there we'll isn't a little executor just kind of like hidden in the background in the background too, yeah it's hilarious which is nice it's hilarious it looks like you know it's in somebody's backyard that they're taking a picture of and the pokemon are popping out similar to how they did c dot community day the live stream right. so I'm hoping they do like a 48 hour live stream, you know, with, with all the Pokemon that you can see, like that would be cool. Uh, uh, well, I, I like that as a companion to the play from home thing. It just gives yeah. you something ambient for the background something else to do. But I don't know, man. I, I just think that there's going to have to be something strong in the game from a community aspect. And I don't think a, a video chat room is going to be enough. So we'll have to see but all right let's take our break adam when we come back we'll get our amazon prime video queued up and we'll watch our episode where for art thou pokemon we'll be back right after this are back from our break thanks so much for that little housekeeping to get through before we get to the back half of the show just remember folks this podcast is powered by patreon please check ours out over at patreon.com slash pokemon professor where you can support this show for as little as one dollar a month and that one dollar will get you access to our patron exclusive discord which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people And if Patreon isn't your thing, there's still a couple other ways you can help us out. If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. And if you're listening via a podcast service like Apple Podcasts, you can take a moment to leave us a review. You can also check out PokemonProfessor.com slash merch for some hot merch action. Coffee mugs, t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies. Oh, man. That reminds me. I placed an order. Blankets, wall art. You you, you placed it, right? Yeah. I got a... A t-shirt and a coffee mug. I knew you were getting. I gotta, I gotta look at the tracking. I want to find out where that is. Yeah, I want it now. It needs coffee. Needs coffee. But uh, yeah, we would appreciate if you were to check that out. All right. Um, before we get into our episode, as we discussed on last week's episode, that Sword and Shield mystery gift distribution is in full swing. This was a four-week-long thing. Uh, This week, it's Galarian Ponita. 
along with a level ball, fast ball, love ball, friend ball, and a beast ball. It's currently in distrib- distribution. You can get this until June 5th. So a couple days after this podcast releases, you could still jump into Mystery Gift and get your Galarian Ponita uh, with the hidden ability. All right, Adam, episode 96, Where for Art Thou Pokemon? This is an interesting one. And we've talked in the past how episodes between Japan and the U.S. got banned. So it would further separate the count of episodes. So we were three episodes behind where we, you know, for episode 95 in Japan, it would have been 98. Now we're up to 96, but there's actually another episode that got that gets skipped here. So the actual 99 episode was called The Mandarin Isle Mismatch. And that episode is not in the current U.S. rotation because of its depiction of Jinx. And we've seen episodes removed because of Jinx before. Here's another one. So now we're actually four episodes ahead. So in Japan, this was episode 100. And in the U.S., it's episode 96 currently. Original air date in Japan was June 10th, 1999. And in the U.S., April 22nd, 2000, again, as episode 96. But Adam, if you are good to go, we can start the show. Are you ready to go? I am R-E-A-D-Y, ready. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, all right, let's get the show started in three, two, one, go. So be a master of Pokemon. All right, so... Where do we leave off last episode? It was kind of, again, another non-GS Ball, non-Orange Island League episode, right? We had a couple of these weird standalone episodes that didn't have anything to do with the main story arc. Right. It's like, I think, didn't they show Ash, like, polishing the GS Ball? But that was pretty much all Yeah, he was, got, looking, right? he was looking at, he, he got out of his sleeping bag and was kind of sitting on a rock. And then Pikachu was like, hey, and he's like, ooh, let me put that away. Yeah, and I want that Pikachu knowing that I was paying special attention to this Pokeball. Yeah, the the, the mission. Like, we, we're just going to yeah. jump from <laughs> island to island rather than actually getting back to Pallet. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a broken record. I, I want I want League badges. I want gym battles. I want, I want battle battles. I just want to see some fights. I want action. <laughs> yes. Action, I don't care. We get action every episode. I just want action that's directed towards the League. Yeah, true. With All right, well, we're well, starting with battle music, so that's always a good sign. And we're not in we're not in water per se. We're on an island, but we don't see Lapras floating around. Yeah, it's it's some island. It looks like Galar, right? Yeah. It does look like Galar. Well, it's it's, it's even yeah. say like this is a very historic village, so. Yeah, I believe the subtitle said like looks like England. <laughs> really? Yeah. I love watching it with the subtitles. I don't ever do that. Me, I know. I, I didn't Maria? until I started doing it recently. Maria. Dear Maria, Sorry, you're coming here. with me. So we've seen... Um, I, don't, I don't think... Have we, have we seen Nidorans before? I thought we saw them on the pink island. Yes, 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 yes. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Now, Nate, take a look at this. So they show Nidoran male, right? She she recognizes it as a, as a male Nidoran. So then he's able to flip it over and look at the female. So they showed her Nidoran for a second, and it you know it had the bow on its back, like the big Zoe two dots bow. Yes. So just keep that in the back of your mind until the next time we, we pull up the decks, and, and I'll, I'll touch base on it. No, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but all right, so here we go. She, she's missing her Maria. She's missing her Nidoran. And the team yeah, has and, yeah, look, signed on The team is going to say, like, hey, we'll, we'll drop everything and help you. Because <laughs> that's just how we roll. <laughs> Ash. Dear girl. <laughs> Oh, Maria. Maria! Ash coming out of the grass. Hey. Where are you, Maria? Come on out. Yeah! 
It's Tracy, like, you're a Pokemon the, the, watcher. The, the sizing was so off there. Like, Tracy was like standing in front of a tree in the background, but like then he interacted with the tree as if it was like a little bush. That's so that's just so weird. Pikachu's like, I don't I, I know. See <laughs> He's so <anything>. sneaky. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some berries. Uh, who's this guy yelling for Tony? Who's Tony? Hey, Tony. So, well, the funny thing here too is like the Maria is Pikachu Tony in the background eating that berry kind of thing. Pikachu's like, huh? What? I love how they kind of shape this out, like a, like a ditto, and it just kind of takes form. Oh, he's so cute. He's got a little bow tie. So Maria's got this giant bow on its back. Tony's got this cute bow tie in the front. All right. So again, Pokedex, normal looking female Nidoran, <laughs> normal looking male Nidoran. Okay. So like, file that like in the back of your head for, have for another that? moment. From a like a guy's name, like Tony. Hey, it's Tony. It's Tony. No, we're also now looking for a Tony. They got beef. They got serious beef. Pikachu's just caught in the middle of it. To, he's just trying to enjoy his like pink apple. If you could splice in like them two angry at each other and then Pikachu yeah. with that face in the middle. <laughs> yeah, they, they go I do it, I know they go off too. It's crazy. It sounds like they're fighting over their Pokemon. Well yeah. Hey hey it's Pika Blue. It's my Tony See my question is great. Like how old are these kids? Well, the the age thing is so weird here because if Ash is ten, these kids have to be five, right? Well, they look like tall wise the same size. I know, but they act like way. I'd less say mature. I'd say like seven. I want to say seven, seven or eight, because they understand like all their emotions and like. Yeah. I don't know. They know how to read and write, so... Alright, so we start to see Tony and Maria interacting, the male and female Nidoran, and uh, Misty picks up on it immediately that these two Pokemon are clearly in love. <laughs> no, you have the last pedal. No, you have the last pedal. <laughs> yeah, it's... They, they uh... And you start to realize why they call this where for out there Pokemon because it's like this love story where I guess you can call them the parents don't want their children the Pokemon to have anything to do with each other so it almost like almost like a little Romeo and Juliet style story that's where the uh, the where for out thou Pokemon comes from you know them everybody in town everybody knows Ralph and Emily no, then this is hey, this is Tony. He's got the mustache. That, that's Mario, dude. It's like that's it Mario. It's funny that like they go to eat at this restaurant and just find out the entire history of these two kids. Hey, man, they got to deliver it somehow. It's like every time they, that these two get a Pokemon, they always get nearer Pokemon and. They're like true rivals. And Pokemon contests. So like, hey, that's that's in the game. That's canon. Yeah. Oh, the bows. Oh, so cute. See, everyone knows. Male and female Nidorans, they they like each other. Yeah, but but these two in particular are clearly meant for each other. It's a real shame. Even Mario knows it's a real shame. <laughs> Please excuse me, I need to go see my brother Luigi. <laughs> He's in the back of the kitchen. He's working on the pipes. I think it might be Tony. I think it might be uh Maria. Dude, I uh, I love the fact that Pokemon have human names in this. Like, I, I just think that's funny. I love when dogs have human names, so Pokemon with human names are pretty funny, too. I'm going to start doing that in Pokemon Go. 
just start nicknaming all my Pokemon just like normal names. Like, this is Ed. This is Bill. <laughs> and when I battle with Bill and Ted, I have to I have yes. to battle with excellent adventure as well. Yes, excellent throws only. <laughs> Look at Tracy. In and out of those binoculars. Like, what's he looking at? <laughs> He's taking notes, man. So Misty's again busting Ash's chops because he's not mature enough to understand or or be able to follow love or the process of love. And there's a reference to Romeo and Juliet. Yep, the balcony like, and the water. And, and then here we get the reveal that the two of them are. True next door neighbors, literally houses side by side from each other, and uh, yeah, it looks like Galar. It's totally Galar. It's so cool. That's a great line by Tracy. So close together but worlds apart. <laughs> you don't tell Misty that anything is not her business. Catching Pokemon. Ooh. It's awesome. I, I love it. I love how she gives it to him. Yo, don't mess with Misty, dude. <laughs> and Tracy's just like in the background, like with a giant grin on his face. So, of course, Team Rocket's here. It shows them in a bento box. No, it's like, a little what? bento box. <laughs> it's so, so messed up. And I got the booby prize. Oh, nice, nice one line right there. Yeah, yeah. And I got the booby prize. It's Pikachu. It's Pikachu. Oh, it's and it just looks like somebody's mansion of a house, but it's a Pokemon Center. I know. So more kind of weird backstory here and. Misty is is trying to do her best to play matchmaker, and how could this ever possibly go wrong? Yo, Ash really does get his butt whipped by Misty all the time. She is the boss. She definitely wears the pants in the Ash Misty relationship. You know what? It's exactly the same thing with you and Ash. Oh no! You must be crazy. So great. So great. All we have to do is convince those Nidoran that the And they've just been like scoping out the place until dark. Just until just dark, yeah, they're just hanging on out the ground. on the lawn. <laughs> no one'll notice here just sitting on the lawn for six hours. <laughs> you've had some heartaches yourself. This is a cool little uh little uh montage throwback memory. But all I ever got was heartache. I'm so sorry, Jesse. Just because I'm mean and nasty and evil. She's mean, nasty, and evil. Who wants to date her? But look, she's emotional. She's human. I love it. I love it. It's like Misty losing her mind on the other side of the fence, and then you have Jesse losing her mind on this side of the fence. Gotta love it. Oh, such a cute little bed. Look at Meowth, what a creeper, Super dude. Creepy. <laughs> yeah. He's the biggest creeper. Hey, how'd you like to be with your boyfriend? And I'm talking forever here. Now you're really being creepy, Meowth. Hey, buddy, how'd you like and, to be with <laughs> Hey, I'm a creep. It's, I know, it's it's so funny. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you gotta do. Dude, Jesse and James are diabolical, man. This is this is some messed up catfish action. What good's a trick if it's not dirty? Everything go according to plan, Meow. They ain't gonna do it, Jess. They both said that even though they're in love, they could never disobey their man. Wow, they are some loyal Pokemon. How about that? I, I do like this though because Jesse doesn't really understand loyalty at all to the point yeah. where she's like, how, "What do you mean? Like, how how is that even a thing?" And James is like, "Oh, that's a good perspective." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I made that up myself. 
She's messed up. She's evil. Yeah, she makes uh, James wear all the girl clothes. I'm sure my love letters will get him here. I don't think I don't think anyone makes him do that, but James. <laughs> I think he thoroughly <laughs> James is the one that it. wants to. And I sent him a remote controlled model airplane. She sent it. Where did she get the money for that? That sounds expensive, yeah. especially know, back right? then. That's before drones. Yeah. Why did you send me that stupid letter? So. When we were saying before, how could this ever go wrong? Well, here you go. It was a complete disaster. They're like, Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Jinx, you owe me an episode. So, yeah, they're talking to each other, but she's allergic to flowers. He gets sick on airplanes. It's just a total yeah, fail every which way you look at it. I know, and they get back to their stick battle, which is, like, super violent. Your love letters didn't work. They should be uh they should have fighting type Pokemon. Settle it on the battlefield. <laughs> and here clearly, you know, we know it's Jesse and James, but yes, James is the uh the female bride in white. And they're just like, Oh, strangers, let me just stop here and talk to you. There's a funny trick we'd like to play. Jesse almost has like emo hair. James is such a high pitched voice. We'll take these Pokemon away. <laughs> Make it doubler than you. And then I saw this and immediately I was like, El Creme, V Max. Yes, G Max. Yeah. <laughs> or Di- yeah, Dynamax, whatever. <laughs> That's great. I forget that the card game and the and the actual video game are two different names. Oh, they cut the cake. It's and like it's inside? like a Trojan horse of a cake with the balloon inside the cake. Like it's such a weird thing. I love it. I don't see like the math working out for how that entire cake came out of the ground and <laughs> the balloon. Like it just proportions were not there. <laughs> <laughs> oh Yo, look, they team, have the team typical Rocket cans. Major engineers, dude. Oh, we gotta follow them. Poor Maria. Oh Maria. Those cans, though, like how they do it—they like when they drive away at their wedding, they have like cans in the back of the car. That's like hilarious. Yeah. Because they have a pretend wedding, and <laughs> people still do that. I only see that in movies. They must have dropped from Team Rocket's balloon. The just married cans. We'll just follow the trail of just Mary cans that they left. This is messed up. They're manhandling these poor Nidoran. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, they're acting all tough. It's great. Jesse just dropped Nidoran. Like, what? I don't know if that was like a recycling joke or... <laughs> I should have dropped you off the balloon instead, huh? Maria! Tony! Tony. Not so fast! Arbok, attack! So, I wanted battles. Yes, we get battles. Not the Not battle the way you that you expect. Wanted. But, I gotta <laughs> say, this whole sequence is pretty awesome because we get to see Maria and Tony kind of working together to just completely dismantle Team Rocket's Pokemon. I mean, obviously you have Victory Bell, you know, friendly fire on Jesse there, but... Ooh. Ooh, Tony. Tony's down. Maria, he's got the you pow- got this. He's got the power of the bow tie. <laughs> Gives them plus one stamina. It's like a choice band. Yeah, they may not be that strong, but yeah, they may not be that strong, but they know how to battle. Yo, Victory Bell Scream just is just so good. I love it. Oh yeah, pumping up music. Maria's battling for Tony. And Tony's now, battling for it, Maria. It starts to it all starts to come together. They're starting to put the put the plot together. Hyper They're like they're like we have more power together. Yeah, that's the best noise ever. The best cries. 
They sound so funny. Yo, I wouldn't want to mess with either of these Pokemon. Oh. Look at those Fury Swipes, man. That that double kick with the... They put their feet in the air, like... They're like synchronized swimmers. Yeah. And I like that Team Rocket has the, the hearts of the arrow through their balloon. Exactly. Or on their balloon. I've talked about this before. I love the Team Rocket vacuum. I love it. <laughs> Suck up all the Pokemon. Pick is just like, hey. <laughs> I know, but look face. at that. I know that smirk is so great, though. It's so awesome. First time Misty's yeah. had a good idea. <laughs> Don't let her hear you say that. And we get our nice Team Rocket and the slow ding. Yeah, Misty, you tell him. You know, you two are much better than Team Rocket. Ooh, you burn. Well, dude, dude, she, 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 uh, she's known for saying it how it is, though. I like that. Trainers ought to make their Pokemon happy. Misty's right. That's you. Yeah. Just look at Pikachu. Mid I don't even make him go into Pokeball. <laughs> Spoiled brat. You don't have to say goodbye. Huh? You're next door neighbors, right? You guys could just be creeps. Right in between. Then you could be together every day. That house build is little, so tiny. Build a little bridge. <laughs> I guess we'll try. A truce. How old are these kids? <laughs> I, I, I think I want to say like eight. Look at their Ooh. socks, though. That's like a six-year-old socks. Yeah, and they so evolve? They evolve and... They still the have question, the bow. And the, yeah, they still the, have the bow, the bow but now, now look at the decks. They're, the bow is in the decks. Why? Why is the bow in the decks for both of them? Ah, uh, why do I care so much? Why does why does dumb stuff like that bother me? I don't know. And I like how Nidorina has like some serious wings for eyeliner. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> Fake laugh. <laughs> So they said, did they evolve from the battle or from the kiss? Yo, it had to be the battle. That was a legit battle. They did all the work, except for that last shock. <laughs> and there you go. Another episode in the books without the Orange League and without the GS ball. <sighs> so what is the, like, how... They got blasted off. Why are they here? Why did they end up here? They just wanted to make a bell. Like, the artist drew a bell tower and was like, oh, wait, victory bell. We got to get this in somehow. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Cute episode, I guess. It was, you know, I like the play on the the whole West Side Story meets Romeo and Juliet, but... I don't know. I think I'm starting to feel the burn of just wanting to get back on track. So yeah. until that happens, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. What'd you think? Yeah. Um, it was nice to see both male and female in their ends and then like see the evolution. I would have liked to see, you know, it go all the way where like, you know, Nitto Queen, Nitto they miss each like other that. so much and then they, they evolve into Nidorina and Nidorino, and then they battle, and then become Nidorino King and Queen. No, they just have to kiss again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they kiss once to become the Nidoran and kiss again to become the Nidoran King. That'd be funny. Or Nidorino, rather. <laughs> That'd be funny. But That's I don't know, love man. Candy. I, I want to get back on track. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I, I hate it, because then I just... Even if the episode's good, I just always have that disclaimer of, oh, yeah, but they didn't do anything in the main story arc. So, And just think, if the Jinx episode was here, that would have just been a complete other filler episode here as well. So we would have gotten two episodes of filler to get us up to episode 100. So, All right, Adam, you got a booster? I have a base sword and shield booster. Okay, I have Rebel Clash. Why don't you go first, since and we'll do the expansions in order. How about that? All right, all right. Sounds good. I'm still that? missing a lot of cards. A lot of cards from this set. Like, I don't have 
a Keldeo. I don't have a Celebi. I don't have... Gold Zashin? <laughs> well, I know. I, I pulled that <laughs> for one of my boxes that I pre-ordered and then sold it immediately and then bought another. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. One, two, three, four. All right. I got a Grass Energy, a Haunter, a Vitality Band, a Raboot, a Grookey, a Shelder, a Mobile, a Galarian Ponyta, Sobble. My reverse hollow is a Galarian Zigzagoon, and my rare is just a Lantern. Ugh. But the Zigzagoon reverse hollow is something that I'll be playing, so like that's cool. All I right, like that. All right. All right. Like I said, I have Rebel Clash. Uh, it is a green code card, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, Lightning Energy, Dan. Carcoal, Heatmore, Roly Coley, Stunky, Clefairy, Voltorb, Nosepass. Uh, my reverse is a reverse Roly Coley. And my, oh no, non hollow Trevenant. Man, what a letdown. This, uh, this booster was from a Zamazenta tin. So I like the fact that the tins came with Rebel Clash, but did not like that specific pack. A Rebel Clash. Yeah. <laughs> One bit. But that's going to wrap up the show this week. Thank you to everyone who made it this far. We appreciate you so much. Please check out gottawatchemall.com for everything that's going on at the show. PokemonProfessor.com for everything that's going on on the network. You can email us, info at gottawatchemall.com, and you can send us a text, voicemail, picture, video, 732-835-8639. That'll be in the description as well. And uh, Adam, if you don't have anything else, I think that's no, it. Just uh, get excited about Darkness Ablaze. Yes, it's coming soon. Well, a couple and, months, and next week's episode. You got time. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everyone. Remember, if you can't be out there catching them all, just hang out with us and watch them all. We'll see you next week. Woo!